In my last video, I showed off how we could place ghost blocks and then have permanent falling entities in them. Well, today I'll be showing off how to make platforms of B36 blocks, which can allow you to make some much more interesting floors. So as you can see here, these are all permanent falling entities, which means that when somebody walks over it, they'll fall in. Now, the only issue with this is that you do require a block for it to be placed on, and it can't be something like a fence gate or um, a sign, because it must have a hitbox, since these are still falling entities. If it does not have a hitbox, it will not stay inside of a B36, and so it will not stay persistent, and they'll just fall through. The original B36 generator was created by Myron. Links in the description. Me and Rutex then created the B36 5x5 platform for Doc M77 during the build battle so that we could attempt to block his opponents by building a B36 platform above them, which doesn't allow building. So to build one of these platforms is pretty easy, as you can see. It's basically just a 5x5 of pistons, then a 5x5 of furnaces on top of that, and 5x5 red snow blocks underneath it. Um, the furnaces have the correct blast resistance required, so they have to be used, and they're the only movable tile entity with that blast resistance. Uh, you can do this in survival. So basically, you just want to place the obsidian, the end crystal on top of that, break the obsidian, and put terracotta, which again has the exact blast protection we want. You then want to place a neverack to the side of that, and a piston on your side, the button, and then light it. There we go. So what this does is that it allows the end crystal to blow up. And then all the rays are going to hit the specific blocks and break them and the piston head only, which will leave us with headless pistons, which you'll see in a second. So what you want to do is you want to button. You'll see that all these pistons are currently up. You're going to want to rejoin. And now, as you'll see, they are all headless pistons. Now, this is important. You want to make sure to break the pistons first, not the redstone blocks. If you break the redstone blocks, they'll just be converted back into pistons. So, there you go. So now you should have a B36 platform. It's now time to create a B36 platform using multiple platforms. So here is basically how it goes. Let's say this is a 5x5 platform of B36. Great timing. I love these guys. Basically, you want to have a 5x5 next to a 5x5 next to a 5x5, although you want to have a height difference between these two. So if this was a 5x5 platform, you'd want to have these ones higher by one block. So here's an example. This would be the shape of your 5x5 platform. The next one should be built one block lower, and then after that, one block higher, depending on this. So here's what it would look like, just mapping it through. A bit hard to tell. But the furnaces here are one block higher than the furnaces over here. As you can see, these are the B36. I can't place anything, and the water's floating. All right, so how do we want to set up a grid like this? Well, first, you want to do all of them diagonally. You do not want to put one and then the other one next to it, because you'll run into issues when you're trying to finish all. I'm in the middle of doing them. Now, I wanted to show you. So uh, this one was the one we created in the middle which I specifically said not to do, although you can do it if you do it correctly. So first things first, you're going to want to put two layers of obsidian, but the obsidian is right next to the pretty So any explosion that happens here won't somehow manage to break it. You then want water on top of all the other beef blocks. 
just to make sure that they don't somehow get blown up. And then there you go. That will work just as fine. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a 5x5 Block 36 platform. Block 36 5x5 platforms can also be made vertically. Although, as you can see, it's a, it's a lot more complex than just placing a bunch of furnaces because it requires this exact array. I have not tested if these can be stacked vertically, although I assume that we're still going to need to put a indent into the location that you place them. There you go. Tip one, start with the lowest first, so that when the water goes on top, the second one will explode and all the offset will go into the water. Instead of it being the opposite way, where you have water here, and then you have to somehow put water on top of these ones to prevent it. Tip two, you want to do the diagonals first, so that you are doing all the lowest ones first. Therefore, you won't have to do the water issue, which is why you want to do all the diagonals before even doing the next side, so you never run into the issue where you're doing the top ones and then you have to take care of the bottom ones later. Tip four. You can change the size of the B36 platform, such as a 5x4. Or, as you may have seen in my previous video, a 1x1. A 1x1 can be very useful, and I'll be using it in a next video to display how you can do custom lighting or hidden lighting. There you go. That's going to be it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and like the video so that you can stay up to date with all the crazy glitches.